you get pigeonholed as a movie guy and a culture guy, but your sports fandom, it's been kind of slept on. You got caught up in this whole Knicks run and what it meant to the city. Give us your, give us your, the Knicks have been so, slowly, their needles have been pulled out of their quills over, <laughs> and now they have no guys left. Just what was the last couple of weeks like? It was really exciting. You know, to just be walking around New York City on game days when they were, they, there were seven games, right? So there were four opportunities to see people making their way to Madison Square Garden. And you knew that's where they were going when you see them all kitted out. And it was so, it was like fathers and sons, every, like many different races and ethnicities and age groups. And, you know, it just, it, I didn't go to any of the games this year, but I don't know. It just, it was an exciting feeling. It was quite, you know, the, the, the blowouts were so confusing because you were just like, what is, what is momentum? You know, that's yeah. a conversation that you can have. You've had it. Um, but this team is great. They're young. They're exciting. You know, um, Randall, Rand, Randall's been injured since what, January? Yeah. Um, you know, they didn't have, everybody wasn't there. Everybody didn't play. But, you know, Brunson, DiVincenzo, um, Hartenstein, the, I mean, the, it was exciting to see these guys come together and not care about the past. You know, I'm a big history person. I think history is important I, everywhere except for sports. <laughs> when you are playing a sport, you don't want to think about history. History should be the last thing on your mind. Um, and I just think that there, that team has no burden. Right. Well, maybe now they will. We'll see what happens next year. Right now they have expectations. Right. But there's now a, a, a certain it's no it's not going to be surprising to see them like almost get to the to the Eastern Conference final. Um, people are going to expect them to be in the final. Right. You know what you just laid out? Because I this is the number one thing I miss about living in Boston mm -hmm. when there's a big series or a big game and just the the different, and I remember writing about this once upon a time, but the energy that you could just feel at like 3.30 on the afternoon. You can feel it. Just everybody's dressed and everybody, it's almost like everybody's going to war on the same day. Mm -hmm. And it's sp a specific energy to walking cities because I don't yeah. think LA yep. has it because LA, everyone's in their cars. But like in Boston, you feel it. In New York City, you feel it. I don't even think like in Washington, D.C. you would feel it because Washington's not oh, like a big that's a little walking city. You me. know what I mean? Chicago's <laughs> a little more spread out. The but, Capitals uh, is like the best you're going to do down there. Yeah. Dallas, Love you, a Capitals. lot of people are in their cars. But like when you have a city where people are just walking around every day and then there's the big game and it's like this, everyone's suddenly wearing costumes almost for the, yeah. <laughs> for the game. It's like everywhere you look, it's like Knicks. But now it's the Rangers, right? The Knicks didn't right, make it. Right, it just flips. But MSG is still in use, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that could have been having both of those at the same time. Dallas been, basically has that now with the hockey team and the basketball team. And the Boston almost had it with the with the uh, the Bruins got knocked out. But it is when they're both going at the same time. It's amazing because it's like it's, every day for yep. a month it's, and a half. It's really exciting. The Rangers, I think. I mean, some of those guys kind of scare me a little bit, but I mean, generally the vibe is exciting. Like I've yeah. been really tempted to go to a range. I'm going to find the time depending on like oh, where somebody like, take Wesley to a ranger game for God's sakes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but it's exciting. It's like a really, New York is just really fun to just even walk by bars and see people losing their minds. Right. Just over, random bars. People yeah. are screaming. I mean, what I've got so, the spot I like to go to and on my way there, you see people in other bars also watching these Knicks games. And it's just like, <laughs> I love it here so much. So Brunson's the guy now. I mean, I think, well, is who, who is the stop the restaurant New York athlete? Is it Brunson? No, it's Steven Chinzo. It's Dante. over Brunson. I mean, not over. Well, it depends on where you go, Bill. I don't know. Aaron I Rodgers? I don't know. Your guy, Aaron? <laughs> no. I don't think I think that we just want to look the other way now. It Aaron was exciting Judge? a year ago. Aaron Judge. Oh, you mean of all the, all the teams? Yeah, Aaron Judge. Oh, I mean, who's the stop the restaurant guy? Split second, everyone. Goes I mean, silent. at this point, it's Brunson, right? Like, if anybody from the Knicks goes out to eat, they're eating not only for free, 
Well, I mean, I guess that's the possible. Most they can eat. <laughs> yeah, possible applause in the restaurant, right? Oh yeah, everybody gets an they get an ovation. I mean, I yeah, how I think cool! That I'm so happy that happened for the Knicks. It's, it's exciting, and I think I mean, I it's funny you mentioned Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I wonder does he even go out in New York anymore? I have not, you know, as you know, I've I've seen him around. I had been seeing him around, and then the injury happened, and I haven't really seen him since. But you made the key point. Out and about, there, I mean. There's history in sports, which we love, but there's also no history because whatever's happening next becomes the history. So all like, Rodgers has to do is go like 5-0 and in the Jets. Nobody's going to give a shit about anything. I don't know, Bill. He's still going to keep talking. <laughs> I mean, Kyrie figured he, it out. I'm, I mean, yeah, because, well, I don't know. Well, wh what did Kyrie figure out? Well, I think he's probably happy on the new team. Mm -hmm. He's a little mm -hmm. bit older. Mm -hmm. Maybe he has a better understanding of of cause and effect, where it's like if there's a commotion off the court about something involving me, maybe that's bad for my team. Right, and he just right. seems like he's, you know, at this point of his career, pretty awesome teammate. He's been pretty reliable. He hasn't caused any issues off the court. Like, it's, do you think though that is somebody like? Do you think this is a place he reached on his own, and how like mad New York was when he left? Um. Or, yeah, maybe, or it's like a career. Or relieved, I guess, is maybe another way to put it. You know, um, you hit a, it's like a career fork in the road thing combined with he's playing with somebody who's better than him, which, mm -hmm. which I think helps. But then also okay. he's playing with a coach who, you know, is a pretty no nonsense, was one of the great point guards ever. What's weird though, is he was in kind of a similar situation in Brooklyn and it went the complete other way, yep. right? Yep. Nash yep. was the Jason Kidd and Durant was the Luca, And for some reason that didn't work out, but... I think we see with sports a lot. Sometimes guys just figure it out later in their career. I also you know? think that, like, I mean, this is the thing that 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 you know very well, but like casting, right? It's a yeah. really huge, no matter how good you are on on the team, like, you know, that was bad casting for the Nets, right? It was. Well, it just you have wasn't... a player, a player run culture. So now he moves into a Dallas team where the culture's already established. It's already built around Luca. It's built yep. around Jason Kidd and their GM. Cubans there. They have big, forceful personalities. And, and you kind of have to, to fit into it. I think wanting to win a championship is way more important at, at some point when you get a certain age. If you are in, if it's in sight, you're just going to, I think you might just want to focus on that and not all that extracurricular stuff. I don't know. And they paid him. They took care of him. They gave him a three-year deal. Yeah, I mean, I love this Mavericks team. Um, I'm curious. I don't like, I hate that they're up against the Timberwolves. I don't want, I mean, I'm so. Well, you must uh, love Edwards. I mean, it can never be Edwards, a final. Edwards checks a lot of your boxes. Like such star, an original personality. Star, yeah. star. And, and the thing that's exciting about Edwards, Edwards is like, he loves playing basketball. He yeah. loves playing basketball. Even when he can't play basketball, he loves playing basketball. Right. right. He loves playing sports. He yes. just, I, I think he's in the running for most authentic, genuine new athlete we've 100%. had in a long time. I mean, I think, every, I think everything he's doing would translate to whatever sport he played. If he played baseball, I think people would oh my respond God. to that. You know, like baseball you could needs him, him sport. so bad. Golf? I mean, I mean, well, that's all golf. Every sport needs an Anthony Edwards, right? Somebody who has just a, like a joie de vivre, um, but yeah, who like also the, is really good at the game. And um, unafraid and authentic and joyful about playing it. That's why there, it's Alcaraz been a love fest is, for him for years. Alcaraz for is months. one of these people, right? Like, you think so? Oh, yeah. I mean, have, have you ever seen Alcaraz lose? When Alcaraz is losing, I'll never forget this. At the U.S. Open last year, when Medvedev cleaned his clock, he was out there on the court, watching Medvedev play what I would say was the match of Medvedev's life against Alcaraz. And Alcaraz was playing really well. He was missing a lot of shit. Doing that thing Alcaraz does, which is like, I really want to entertain you and the points don't matter that much because I'm 21 and I'll be back. But Medvedev was like, I'm not having it and just played an amazing match. But if you watched I was close enough. I could see his, or I mean, you could watch his face at home too, but like between points during breaks on the changeovers, he just looked so 
shocked by how well Medvedev was playing. And it was like, this is great tennis. And I'm on court losing to it. And my great tennis isn't as good as this guy's. And it just completely threw him off. But he just was delighted even in his loss. He didn't, it was just, I don't know. It was very, it was very moving and like exciting. Anthony Edwards has that. He has like, even if I'm like, when he was not playing well, you know, for the first half of game seven, how many points did he score? I mean, it was like one for seven. Yeah. In game seven. I mean, you know, just to, for, to watch him figure it out, you would have never known he was losing. But then when it came together, he just turned it into the credible Hulk. And that was exciting. I don't know. I, I also, love him. I really love what a great teammate he is. I love that he really wants to lift the other guys up on mm-hmm. the team and mm-hmm. as just this alpha leader. And you can even see like, Sometimes I, when somebody makes a shot, they call a timeout and they go to the bench and you can just see how the other guys like drift to him and react to him. And it's mm-hmm. just different. And that, and that's he's the part young. that, yeah, it's not like, I mean, there's a gravitational force there that is so much bigger than the sport itself. And I wonder what age does for that. Um, and like, how does, I mean, I don't mean to be crass about this, but like, what are the what are the sports companies and the, you know, energy drink companies and like, what are the endorsements? What are the messages of the commercials that he starts to make? Is he just going to be another state farm guy? Or are they going to like build a whole new campaign around a, like, I would say once in a generation energy. Yeah. I don't know what kind of, you know, hall of fame life he's going to have as a player, but like, I haven't seen anybody come into the league who's got, the energy he has like Luca has that a little bit I love watching Luca you know make crazy shots and seem like he should be playing a different sport but is playing basketball and is really good at it but Anthony Edwards is like a different thing um and I thought um yeah you know because I remember when Kobe came in mm, Kobe mm, was super mm. interesting mm-hmm, like he mm-hmm. there was a thoughtfulness to him and Oh, he, had, he seemed wise. Yeah, and it was like, what's going on with this guy? We, he was mm-hmm. living in Italy. There, it was, mm-hmm. you know, and he was very comfortable in the spotlight. And there was just some unusual stuff about him. Where some of the other guys that came in the league, even when, like when Jordan came in the league, you can go back and watch his Letterman interview that he does his first year. Like he's, it's like unpolished Jordan. Like he's not mm-hmm. the guy that he would become in the late eighties. He seems young and like he's not that comfortable. Yeah. Edwards is Edwards is com- like, even when he did Hustle with Sandler, he's super comfortable in that movie. It's like, how are you so good at acting? You're like 20. So he's so just exciting. a freak. It's so exciting. It's gonna be fun to watch him go. It's gonna be fun to watch him represent Team USA in, uh, at the end of July. I'm sure he's gonna be the Oh my God, we get team. to watch him at the Olympics. Yeah. I totally forgot. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a good spot. <laughs> 